Good morning. It is Friday. That's always a good thing, isn't it? I didn't sleep so good for the past two hours, but whatever. I got enough to get me through the day. Yeah, I went to bed at what, about 4.30, and I was plagued with stress dreams. One was just about like a sink backing up. Like I was living in the place I was gonna sell, and the sink sort of clogged, and as I tried to clear the clog, it just backed up and flowed over and went under the door, and I had no towels because I'd already packed the towels, and like it was just water going everywhere. I mean, it, it, it's a classic stress dream, isn't it? Like, you know, something flowing out of your control, ah. So that took up a little bit of the sleepy time last night. I think I did ultimately get some sleep. Yeah, yeah, so I made my first cup of coffee in the new place. Tastes just like a cup of coffee from the old place. <laughs> so not much has changed in that department. And I didn't move over all my toiletries. So I'm going back to the old place, I'm gonna take a shower, grab a few things, and go to work. I feel like my outlook for the day is good. I'm a little afraid of how tired I am, but honestly, that'll like once the coffee kicks in, it'll be fine. Student-wise, it's a design day. They're working on drawings and designs and I can just sort of help coach them through that. And that's, that's really fun because that's the creative process. And then we get into the building process and that's fun too. It's, a, it's an awesome job, I'm telling you. It's, it's a luxury to be able to teach a group of people in the way that you think, you know, to make up your own program I feel very lucky. When I was hired, they were like, you know, teach to your strengths. So they liked my portfolio, they liked my presentation, they thought my skill set, my delivery of that skill set was was worth showing high school kids. How cool is that? If, if in my process of making, I change something or I learn a new skill or a new machine or a new technique or, or, or whatever, I can just pay that forward and, and, and pass it on to the kids and that's an amazing privilege. And then to watch them implement it and, and, and do variations on it, it's, it's this wonderfully immersive, hybrid educational environment that I, I just love. On my mind a little bit today, of course, will be that she's packing up the condo, but I'm way less stressed because I don't live there anymore. The stuff that's in there is more or less what we've agreed upon her taking. My genuine stress comes from the fact that I have a feeling she'll expect that the dog will be there and it won't be. And since she's leaving tomorrow, maybe she's gonna be upset that she doesn't get to see the dog or she thinks I'm doing something mean. I'm readying myself for text that will come on that subject. I probably should have taken the day off, you know, I'd be more calm if I did, but I love my job and I love working with the kids, so I'm trying to burn the candle at all ends. I hope I don't regret this one. I don't think I, like, today's a design day, and I love design days. And if we get designs today, then next week can be more of a build week. I didn't get all the artwork out. I hope that's not an issue. I put it in such a way that it looks decidedly mine. All right, I'm gonna put this away and go to school. I will see you after. Okay, so that is another week done. Today's a weird one. Definitely running on that sort of like low sleepness, but the day went really well. Like I wasn't tired, I wasn't sleepy. You know, when you haven't slept super well and everything's a little like, a little more surreal, like colors are a little brighter or, yeah, everything just has a little bit more pop. Like things are brighter and more colorful and you're just like, whoa. That's a little what today felt like. I had a great time with the kids. I really liked designing the boards and sort of giving people a little bit of latitude to just play and experiment and, and try things. It's 2.41 right now, so she's been moving stuff out for an hour and 41 minutes. And I'm not gonna pretend that I haven't been thinking about it a lot. What the experience is like for her going back into the home that we own together and moving through the space and taking the things that are left. I wonder if there's any sentiment there or if it's just matter of fact. These are things, these will go to new life. I really don't know the person that is moving out of that house today. So I wonder a lot about, about how it all goes. I wonder if he's there. I'm grateful, I'm grateful for myself. I'm glad I've done as much work as I have to move as much stuff out as I have so that I'm just going back to get some things. Like it will be interesting after therapy to go back and see what it looks like, what she has taken, what's left behind, what I'm assuming I need to deal with in terms of throwing things out and cleaning and whatever. There's assorted things in the pantry still. My hope would be that she either took those things or has disposed of them. My hunch is that'll fall on me. I was fully expecting to hear from her regarding the dog, but I haven't. I'm headed to therapy right now. I hope I'm good conversationally. I feel a little stunted, maybe just from tiredness, but on the same token, I don't want to go back to my apartment and just sleep now, so I'm grateful to have something to do. If I didn't have therapy, I'm sure I would just go up to the barn and be. This is better. It's been a long week. Hopefully a week from now. Yeah, that'll, that'll be interesting to see where a week from now I am. 
I don't imagine I'll be going back to the condo very much. Last week I kind of had notes for things I wanted to talk about with the therapist. And this week I don't. It's funny, I'm a, I'm a little bit nervous. Like I'm nervous that I'm tired and a little emotional and that the things that aren't issues might get talked about as, it, as issues, but it's probably not true. If anything, I'm just a little bit more vulnerable and maybe we can touch on things we might not ordinarily touch on. Hi. That was pretty darn wonderful. It was a different kind of meeting again. It's so interesting how it changes and morphs based, kind of based on where I'm at. I'm not shredded or devastated today. Things that were on my mind are changing relationship dynamics with certain people. There was a moment at which I was, I was there talking and she was just kind of like smiling and looking at me. And I just stopped and she was just, if any, it, it seemed like a gaze for a little, like she was just gazing at me for a minute. She was like, I was just really appreciating like your wisdom and I was like, what? Like, it, it made me a little giddy, and here's what's, it's awkward for me to talk about with her, because I kind of like her, I, I like my therapist. You know, I said something, and she laughed, and she's like, we have the same sense of humor, and I was like, I know. And then, at one point, my like, the therapist was like, uh, you know, is she attractive? And I was like, yes. And I was sort of thinking, like, she kind of looks like you. <laughs> But I can't say that. Oh, God. You're not allowed to like your therapist. But I do. It's so strange. Anyway, that, the, that moment where she was just... She kind of made me blush when she was talking about appreciating my wisdom. And I was just like... You know, you think, like, could we ever be friends? I don't I don't know. We talked about counter-transference a little bit. And how, you know, when she has stuff going on in her life, she has to be careful about not bringing it to, not applying it to people that she's talking to, which is pretty interesting just in terms of, you know, professional practice, but more specifically about, about awareness. We commiserated a little bit about, you know, I, I said, does that happen very often? Because I don't, I don't feel like I get, aside from this breakup, like I'm not caught unaware as much as I used to be. How nice that is. Career-wise, the surprises are different, but you don't make beginning career mistakes anymore that stem out of inexperience. And I like being at that point in my career. I don't think you should come away from therapy crushing on your therapist, but it's so, it's so strangely intimate to sit there for an hour and 10 minutes, hour and 15 minutes, and you just, you just, you just look at each other and talk to each other. You know, it's sort of like if you went out on a date and sat across the table from each other and had a conversation, you know, you'd look at each other and, and eat. And that's considered a date. But this is that, you know, devoid of food. So you're not even distracted by the meal. You just sit and talk intensely the whole time. But it's not a date, it's therapy. I don't know how to deal with that. I mean, I guess you just keep telling yourself, no. I got my Froyo, it was good. Well, that was something that got said in therapy. We we're talking about the counter-transference thing and, and so we were talking about counter-transference and, and she was talking about, you know, when I first came in today and I asked how her week was and she was like, I just want to know about your week. And then my response was, yeah, I know that, but that that's kind of the dance. I said, I know that if I ask you how your week was, you're going to bring it back around to me. And I said, but I'm not going to stop asking you how your week was because that's me being true to me. I ask you how your week was because I care and you, you turn it back to me and that's fine. But if sometime you chose not to do that, that would also be fine. But what I said was, that's the dance. I thought that it was interesting. It was just that our conversation today was like a little bit more of like a meta level conversation, which was nice. I felt a little more human. I felt a little less broken. I felt closer to being able to become someone again, become my own person and be good in a relationship. It was interesting when she was asking me about because I definitely held back a little. I mean, it's, it's true. Like, I don't know how I feel, but at one point she was like, could it be a romantic interest? And I don't know, maybe I'm trying to read her as she's trying to read me, but you know, her facial expressions were, were a little, I don't know, I don't know. It's just a unique thing to sit there and stare at each other. You know, I look her in the eye and she looks at me and, and we sit and look at each other and talk and uh, it's intense, you know, it, it is personal. It's, I guess it's what therapy is like for people, but when she's, recognizing that we have the same sense of humor and I make her laugh and she's appreciating my wisdom and I don't know what it's like to have somebody get sort of like sparkly eyed at you but she definitely felt like she liked me a little bit today and maybe 
Maybe it's just a from afar thing, but she complimented me, you know, talking about my wife's family and how it's not just me dealing with it, it's it's been a whole family. She's like, you know, so so her dad probably feels like he lost a daughter and you know, you came along and you're just this bonus, this just this wonderful person. And I was like, oh, that went a really long way. Like that, that's really nice to hear from somebody. <laughs> I was just thinking like, I'm trying to imagine going into a, an appointment with her and being like, so hypothetically, what happens if a, if a patient starts to, to like their therapist? <laughs> I'm sure that would go over well. That wouldn't change the dynamic at all. I'm grateful for her, for her help, for her processing. I wonder what happens.